for joining me. I'm Jennifer Moore here with The Sewing Report. This is a very special live edition, and this is why we're going to do a live unboxing of something that just came in the mail a couple days ago. This is the Janome, a Janome cover stitch machine. This is the Cover Pro 1000 CPX, and I would like to thank my friends at Pink Castle Fabrics, Jason and Brenda. Without them, this video, this live stream would not be possible. So, we're going to get into it, but I've been wanting a cover stitch machine for quite some time. I've been making clothing and sometimes the hemming is just kind of a pain. So what a cover stitch machine does, it's somewhat like a serger, but it does more professional looking hems. It can do a chain stitch, which is basically like a chain, which is basically like a straight stitch, but it's more reinforced. And it can also do decorative stitches too, if you'd like the stitching to be showing. So we're going to be opening this up, taking it out of the box, seeing what's inside this magical box. You know, it's a cover stitch machine in a box and uh, kind of going over things. I have never used a cover stitch machine before in my life. So if you are intimidated by the idea of using a cover stitch machine, don't be because I've never used one either. So if you're joining me live, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to smash that like button and let me know where you are watching from. And if you have used a cover stitch machine before, are you yay or nay? Is this something you're interested in getting? I'm just kind of curious to see how many other seamstresses use a cover stitch machine or are even interested in one. So that's something that I would like to know. And I'm watching along with you. I can see your comments. So let me know if you have a question or a comment and we will be answering in these in real time. If you're watching the replay, be sure to leave a comment as well if you have a question. And let's uh, get into this. So again, this is the uh, Janome Cover Pro 1000 CPX, and I did a little bit of research before getting this. All right, we got a couple comments. Uh, Doherty says, hi, Jennifer. I'm finally here from Denmark. She has this machine and she likes it. Well, thank you so much, Doherty. And I know she's been emailing me quite a bit, um, trying to catch the live show. So thank you for joining us. Green Tree 202, hi from West Virginia. I want that exact brand and model one day. Can't see what you have to say about it. And uh, I'm curious to see too, because I've never used one of these machines. Uh, they look like a serger, but they're not. This box is pretty uh, hip. This box is, they mean business. It's packed really well. So we're gonna try to open this up and see. All right, let's, let's, let's rip this baby open here. All right. I got my trusty box cutter. All right, let's try to. All right, and hopefully my goal for this is that I can open this box and get this out without too much assistance because James, I think, is downstairs doing some other stuff. And you might occasionally hear a cat meowing in the background. Don't mind that. All right, we've got Marie. Hi from Washington. Looking forward to seeing what you have to say about this machine. Marie, me too. I've never used one of these. And actually, when I was going to find resources, I was trying to do some research on cover stitch machines. There are some, but there's not a ton. So I figured, you know, when I started using a serger, I was intimidated by it, but then once I got comfortable with it, it really was pretty, you know, it came naturally. So I want, I hope the same thing for those of you who are interested in trying to cover stitch machine, but haven't pulled the plug yet. You know, hopefully, hopefully these videos will help you tame the fear factor and not be intimidated by another piece of machinery. All right, so, all right, the first thing, all right, we've got, okay, the most important thing, the instruction manual. Obviously, I will definitely need to read this. And actually, I did try to look at some, I, I found a few videos and I found a few websites that did talk about this machine. Um, it is a four thread machine. Some of them are only three thread. So this one can actually do triple rows of stitching. You can also switch the needles out. You can do two rows, you can do one rows, one row, and you can, uh, apparently this machine is easier to thread than a serger. I'm curious to see it for myself. We've got Lisa, Lisa J, Seattle. Do you know the difference between a cover stitch and a serger? Yes. So Lisa, there, a, a serger is more for doing the seam, the actual seam allowances. So right here I've got this, this is just a top I got from like Ann Taylor Loft. And okay, so the serging is done on seams. So right here, and sergers typically have a knife on them. 
So it cuts off the edge of the fabric to make a clean edge and it surges the edges so it leaves this uh, pretty durable, um, you know, there's some looper threads in here and there's, uh, you know, three rows of stitching. So this, so basically this is great for knits because you can stretch this out and it, the threads won't break. It's pretty durable. And, uh, and also I noticed in this top, they also have some, uh, some elastic in there for some more stability, which is something I'm curious to kind of test out with the cover stitch machine as well. Uh, because I have heard that some uh, flimsier fabrics might be a little trickier to work with. So that's a surged edge. Cover stitch machines do not have a knife. And cover stitch machines basically are what you see here on this sleeve. So it's this one has a, two, a twin row of stitching. And then on the back, you can see it kind of traps the seam. It traps the raw edge with this uh, network of stitching here. So the difference between the serger is that this one, there's no knife, otherwise this would have just cut this whole thing off. And then, you, so on the front side, it just looks like regular stitching. On the back side, it looks more like a serged edge. Um, but that's why I wanted to get this because heavy knits is no walk in the park. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I know a lot of people are like, I use a twin needle. I personally have not had much success with twin needles. So I'm excited to try this out. I read a couple more comments. Judy from Denver. I'm still a serger newbie. I'm looking forward to see what you do with this. Penguin and Pear. Oh, wow, you got a cover pro. You will love it. And Anitra says, I think you will enjoy the convenience of having a cover stitch machine. I have machine envy. Well, Anitra, at the end, towards the end of this live stream, we're going to talk about more how you can get a cover stitch machine from my friends at Pink Castle Fabrics because they have a special offer just for sewing report viewers. So, all right, let's, let's, all right, get the show on the road. I think this is a cover. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try to put some stuff, some of the stuff on the floor, just because uh, this table is only so big. But this is sort of like a cloth cover, and we'll take that out in a little bit. Right now, I'm just trying to get this thing out of the box. All right, we've got. All right, this is definitely a power cord. That at least I think it is. And oh, all right, I think we've got an accessory box. This is cute. So this is kind of neat. It actually comes with a little box with the accessories in it. Um, when I got my brother Serger, it just came with like a plastic Ziploc bag. So this is definitely a step up, Jimmy. Thank you very much. And inside, oh, this is cool. So we've got a couple like different screwdrivers. I'm gonna guess this is to tighten and loosen. I'm gonna guess this is for the needle and this might be for the machine itself. We've got some spool caps, some, uh, Oh, I forgot the name of these, but these are basically for um, spools of thread. If you have like metallics or something that unravel, this net kind of keeps the tension right. So it keeps the thread from coming out too fast. All right, we've got the tweezers. And tweezers are my favorite thing to use for any serger type machine, especially for threading. And I believe this one also comes with some sort of threader, I believe. I think I saw that on the box. Yeah, so... I'm gonna have to look to see what this does, but apparently this is actually a needle threader. And I'm very curious about this little guy. I did see that in the manual and apparently this will, all right, I really need to, all right. But, but instead of me just pretending I know what I'm doing, I'm gonna actually read the instructions and get back to you on this. But let's continue. All right, let's take out the styrofoam. Oh, this is, okay. And the one good thing about these machines is that these are really packed, these are really packed well. Like look at, this is specifically made for this machine. They obviously don't want the machines to break in shipping or get damaged. So the packaging for this is no joke. Oh, this is cool. Wow, and it even comes with some spools of thread already on it. Okay, um, I'm gonna, all right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this box on the floor and then I'm going to lift, to hopefully lift the machine out. We'll see if that works. All right. And I, obviously I'm not exactly a bodybuilder, so this is gonna be pretty interesting. Okay, hopefully I don't drop this. Cause I don't think Pink Castle Fabrics will take this back. I don't, I don't think they're gonna want me to break it on camera live. So that would be bad. Okay, so, all right, let me try to take you out. Actually, this is not nearly, okay, my hair is going a little crazy. This is not nearly as heavy as I was anticipating. Oh, all right, one of the spools kind of came out there we go. One of the spools sort of came out during 
And this actually kind of looks like it's like ready to go. All right, we got these in. And this obviously, this is the like thread guide. So this kind of stands up on its own. Wow, okay. All right, so I'm gonna show you, wow, this is actually a very cool looking machine. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty exciting. I've got a couple more comments. Okay, oh wait, no we don't. Sorry guys. And yeah, if you have a question or if there's something you want me to show closer up, let me know. This looks, wow, this actually looks like ready to, you know what, maybe we'll try out some fabric. I think I've got some over, over on the other side of the room. But this actually looks like it's like ready to go. That's kind of neat. All right, so let's see if there's anything else in the box. All right, let me pick up this. I don't know if there is actually. I think that might be it. All right, we're gonna try to take this. I just wanna make doubly sure there's nothing at the bottom. And I'm kind of surprised. This thing actually looks like you can cover stitch with it right away. I don't know. So maybe we'll try it out and see how this does. Okay, all right, there, that is it for the box. But yeah, so if you do ever need to ship this somewhere, like like say you bought it from Pink Castle Fabrics and you know you wanted to get it serviced or send it somewhere, like the styrofoam that is packed in is, it's very well packed. All right, so let me show you the front of this machine. This is actually super cute. It's big, definitely bigger than the serger and it's got a really big workspace, which I think is very cool. And I do like that it already came threaded with some thread, so I guess you could try it. Oh, that's cool. So the spools of thread actually kind of nest quite nicely down on the spool holders. So these stay are staying pretty intact. Maybe we'll try to do a run through with this. Hello, Champagne Twist and we got Doherty. Was there a DVD in the box? You know, Doherty, there might be. Let me check. All right, let's, let's, let's scope some of this other stuff out. I don't know if there's a DVD. Um, there might be. All right, so let's see what else. And again, I haven't opened this stuff. Okay, so this is the cover. Oh, this is actually, okay, so the cover that came with one of my other machines was like, I'll say it was like basically like a, like a lint, I don't know, it was like a plastic bag. This is actually some pretty nice, like, vinyl. So, this is actually pretty deep. Like, this is actually a pretty decent cover. So, that's actually pretty cool. All right, so we've got that. All right, let me look through the instruction manual. There might be a DVD in there. I might just not be seeing it. Uh, but if not, I think I'll be okay. Okay, we've got the instruction book. Right here. Got a 20, okay, so Janome has a 25, limited 25 year warranty. Okay, and I believe it is, uh, all right, let's see the warranty. Some of the things are like five years, okay. Parts and labor, it looks like one year. Electronics, five years, and then 25 years, I'm guessing is like the mechanicals. Like, I'm guessing that I'm guessing the 25 year stuff is like the metal inside it, stuff like that. So yeah, we got the instruction manual and I honestly don't have any idea what I'm doing. Um, but again, I did watch some, I, for some reason I think I'm an expert because I um, read a couple things and watched a couple videos. So we will see. All right, opening and closing the looper level. Okay, so this book looks actually pretty helpful. And I do own another Janome machine, so this is not my first one. Um, so that's good. But yeah, this machine is, wow, this is bigger than I thought. And this machine on Pink Castle Fabrics retails for $5.99. Um, that is a special price because I think on the Janome website it said like, uh, I believe it said like $6.99 or $7.99. Don't quote me on that, but... Uh, but you can, you can definitely get some deals on this machine. And there is another machine one step down called the 900 CPX, and then there's one step above it called the 2000 CPX. I'm not really sure what the difference is. Oh, thank you, and James has brought me some, some fabric. Oh, thank you, James. He's not gonna be on camera today. He, he's, uh, he's feeling a little shy, and I think he's got some other stuff going on. So maybe we'll try to cover stitch some fabric and see if that works. Um, but yeah, I really like this little accessory bag. This is super, this is actually pretty cute and very convenient. And let's open up the little power cord. 
All right, Champagne Twist says, what is the difference between an overlocker and a cover stitch machine? Now, Champagne Twist, we did go over this at the beginning of the live stream, but basically, um, the serger is more for seams uh, because it's got a knife. So the seams will be cut and like they'll get this like little overlocking stitching on it. A cover stitch machine does not have a knife. Um, and it's more for hemming. Um, you can do chain stitching, which I'm actually pretty excited about because uh, sometimes when I'm working with fabrics, I feel like the straight, just a straight stitch isn't enough durability. So I think this, this chain stitch would be good just for that added extra security at all of your seams, um, but it still looks like a straight stitch. So a cover stitch machine can either do, either do a double or triple row of stitches, and then on the underside there is a network of stitches from the looper. So that is the difference between a cover stitch machine and a serger. Um, some sergers are dual, dual machines, so they do both serging and cover stitch machine, cover stitch functions. But from what I understand, converting the machine from like the serger to the cover stitch machine is kind of a pain in the butt. And that's something I don't really want to deal with. So that is why I think it's awesome that uh, Pink Castle Fabrics is actually loaning this machine. And now I would like to be transparent. This is not a sponsored video. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. But Pink Castle Fabrics is loaning me this machine for the purpose of making videos to try it out and to try to make reviews for you and you know let you know what I think and also to maybe maybe do some tutorials on it we'll see we'll see how good I get at this thing I don't know but I'm pretty excited about this because this looks this just looks awesome oh and I think I don't know if this is supposed to be in the thread guide too um it might need yeah I don't know I don't know if this is supposed to go through here too I'm gonna do that and see I don't know I'm thinking this needed to go through here because there's four of them but you know I'm not an expert but I did notice that um, all of the threads seem to do like a little like uh, do a little twisty thing through all these holes here whatever that means now I'm not a sewing machine expert but hopefully this will if I can use it maybe this will seem less intimidating for you if you've never used a cover stitch machine before Doherty says they are not the same. No, they definitely are not the same. Kittenish behavior, hello, hello. No, don't be jealous, kittenish behavior, because right now I'm getting serif from all over myself, but this is a pretty awesome looking machine, and I am really excited to try to use it. So let's see if I can plug this thing in. I don't know. Um, yeah, I did not see a DVD in there, but um, when, I, when I Googled Janome 1000 CPX, I did see a, um, uh, like someone had put the Janome video on YouTube. So if you are looking to watch the videos, just search, just type in Janome 1000 CPX and you should find those same videos that I did. And they were actually pretty helpful, although the videos look a little dated. And that is one thing I've noticed with many manufacturers is that the, the DVDs and the video help tend to be kind of, uh, kind of old school. So, so there's that. All right, so we're gonna, I'm really making a mess down here, by the way. All right, so we've got our dual power cord slash foot pedal here. So we're gonna try to undo you. All right, if I can get this plugged in and working, that would kind of be a miracle, but also a testament to how easy this machine really is to use. So hopefully that's the case. All right, let me see if I can get this plugged in. All right, I think that seems okay. Oh, okay, yeah, James is back. He's got a surge protector. Yeah, you can plug's closed now. Okay, all right, he's leaving. All right, James is peacing out, everybody. Say hi, James. Hi, James. Hello. <laughs> yeah, there is a plug, so I'm okay. He's trying to be very helpful, though. So let me see if I can get this plugged in, which I think I can. All right, here we go. All right, I've got the foot pedal going, and uh, I may have to turn this around just so that I'm not um, trying to use this like backwards. Um, maybe after some time and skill, I may be able to do that, but probably not the first time. All right, so I'm gonna try to move this guy around. But yeah, so it's got the same, it looks like it's got the same like tension dials. So it does look pretty similar to a serger, except for the fact that there's only like one looper thread. So that is cool. All right, let's try to move you. 
around. And I think this is a tension dial. I'm not really sure. All right. All right, let's... All right, this is actually... I'm actually pretty jazzed about this. This looks like an awesome... This does look like a really cool machine. Oh, and there's some paper under it. All right, oh, here's the... Um, okay. There's a random little piece of paper here, but that, um, maybe it's to protect the, the needle bed. I'm not really sure, the needle plate. Um, all right, let's try to turn this on. Wow, I don't know what that button there means. Um, we will see. All right, let's try to turn this on and see what happens. Um, all right, and I think this is the hand wheel here. And then I think this is the different, the bottom lever is the differential feed. And this looks like it's the stitch length here. Um, and I think the stitch width, I think the stitch width depends on how many needles you have going in it. I believe that is, I believe that is the case. Um, I don't know if I should just give it a whirl and see what happens. And um, most of the tensions right now are set on four automatically, except for the last one, which is on three. But it does have like a little rectangle around the numbers. Maybe that's like the standard setting is 443, I guess. I don't really know. If someone has the answers, please tell me because I certainly don't. All right, we got a couple more comments. Um, Penguin Apparel, I was surprised how easy I found my cover stitch to thread and use. Champagne Twist says, I missed the first part because my computer is really slow. I'm so sorry, Champagne Twist. Um, Lisa, Okay, the Janome Cover Pro 1000 seat cover stitch is $7.99. And that, I think that's right, Lisa, because I think I did remember seeing that on the Janome website. But I've linked Pink Castle Fabrics in the description box because Pink Castle Fabrics is offering it for $5.99. And I'll tell you a bit more about the company later. Um, I'm actually friends with, one of, with the owners, Brenda and Jason. They're really great people. They really care about providing great customer service. And... The reason I originally connected with Brenda, one of the owners of Pink Castle Fabrics, is because she and I are both very passionate about sewing and very passionate about encouraging people to sew. So we kind of connected a few years ago and we've been talking ever since. So we decided to kind of collaborate and um, do, and kind of we wanted to focus on machines that there haven't been a lot of videos about because there really aren't a ton of videos about cover stitch machines on YouTube. So I figured, you know, why not me? Um, and I think almost the fact that I'm not an expert, maybe that would seem like less scary to people because if I can do it, anyone can do it, right? All right, we got a couple more comments. Doherty says, I, the kind of boring, I think I fell asleep the first time I saw the DVD. And it does seem like the videos I found, they were like, like they were definitely not shot recently. And the voice dubbing was kind of comical. It's like, Jenna Moy, enjoy your cover stitch machine. Like it was stuff like that. So I find those videos funny. Like the machine that get, the DVD that came with my brother Serger, it was clearly produced in like the early 90s during like Desert Storm. And it was kind of hilarious. So sometimes you can get a kick and some entertainment value out of these things. Although I would like to say to the manufacturers, I do wish you would kind of update the video lessons every once in a while because I do think um, some people might get a little lost while watching them, but you know what? They are good for entertainment value. All right, we've got M. Gilbert. I'm here eventually. Have you covered what a cover stitch machine is? M. Gilbert, we did, yes. Yeah. So if you'd like to see that part, we kind of talked about it at the beginning. So after this is over, or you can even do it now, just, uh, just go back to the beginning. Um, but the difference between a cover stitch machine and a serger is that a serger does seams and a cover stitch machine mostly does hems, uh, chain stitching, and decorative stitching, but stitching that you want to be visible. And the cover stitch, the cover stitch machine, sorry, also does not have a knife on it. Um, so that's one thing that I guess the machines that convert from a surgery to a cover stitch machine, you have to like remove the knife and do all these other things. And from what I understand, people just don't, you don't, you don't end up using a machine as much if it's difficult to get it to the settings you want. So I'm really hoping this machine is pretty easy to, um, you know, maybe take out some of the needles because I definitely can see using it for the chain stitching, definitely. Especially when I'm working on a project that I really want to uh, reinforce the seams. M. Gilbert, do not apologize. Don't 
don't worry about it. Um, we've gotten that question a few times, so it's good to continue answering it. All right, that is a very big and beautiful sewing machine. Do they sell those in pink? Yes, Allison, Pink Castle Fabrics does sell this machine, and their price advertised online is $5.99. Um, so $5.99, and I would like to let you, Pash, is it Pash? She says, can I get a shout out? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. All right, R Rara says $7.99 for perfect seams. And Rara, I think, one, well, one thing, Pink Castle Fabrics is offering a great deal, $5.99 for this machine. Um, and here's the thing, it saves you a lot of time and it gives you a better looking finish, finished garment. Because I think one thing that we, we want our, our handmade clothing is to look, is to not, for people not to be able to tell the difference between a handmade garment and a ready to wear garment. In fact, I think our handmade items can even look nicer than stuff you get in the store. Because once you start looking, once you kind of start really in inspecting your clothes that you buy at stores, you start to notice the little imperfections that you never would have noticed before. Um, but I have tried to use a twin needle before and it just did not work out very well. Um, so that's why I was really excited to try this out. Um, I personally like unitaskers for sewing. Um, that's something that I actually picked up from this blog called like Taylor Taylor. It's a guy who makes his own clothing. Is that you will sew more and it'll be a lot easier for you to sew if you have machines specifically dedicated to certain tasks. Like having a domestic machine, having a serger, having a cover stitch machine, maybe an embroidery machine. Because um, even when I had the brother that had the embroidery machine slash regular sewing machine, I had to, you know, there was so much you had to do to switch it out that you just didn't end up using one of the functions, which is kind of a shame. But time is definitely a precious asset. And I think a lot of these machines, well, yes, they do cost money and they are an investment. They save you time and they will give you a better finished your garments. So that's why I wanted to cover this machine is because, you know, I was excited to try to try it out. So I don't know, let me, all right, maybe I'll just stick a piece of fabric in here and we will, we'll see. All right, let's, uh, all right, I'm just gonna try to put something in here. We'll see how it goes. I, again, I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing this, but we're gonna, we're gonna try it anyways. Rara says, I'm lucky I have a sewing cafe nearby where I can do stuff like that. I wouldn't use it enough though to make only one worthwhile. And Rara, that's the thing, not every machine is for everyone, but this would be for someone who makes a lot of clothing. Um, like especially someone who maybe has kids and you're sewing a lot of kids clothing or someone who, you know, like me, I'm really trying to get serious about garment sewing. And I'm actually just gonna give this machine a whirl and see uh, see what happens. I don't really know, um, but we're gonna try it out. I have no idea what I'm doing, but that's okay. Oh, and it looks like there's a button on the front where you can change what kind of stitching it is. That's kind of interesting. Um, so we will, all right, I, I guess we'll just try this out. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we will find out together. Um, all right, let's, uh, wow. Okay, this is actually, all right, I'm kind of impressed. This thing is like ready to go out of the box and it actually sews, it's sewing very, very easily. Like this, this is actually very easy to use and it really, like the, the motion, like the machine itself is very smooth. There's no shakiness. Wow. All right, this is actually pretty cool. Um, and I, I'm not really using a guide, I'm just trying this out. Now I did see some one tip somewhere. All right, so I saw a tip online that when you get to the end, all right, you do one last revolution with the hand wheel, actually that, and then you lift, all right, so you lift up your needles to the highest position, position they can be. Um, you bring up your presser foot, okay, and then let me get the tweezers out. And apparently you're supposed to like, let's see here, pull, you're supposed to pull these threads towards you. All right, so you're supposed to pull the threads towards you like this and then tug. And apparently they're just supposed to take, okay. It's not working out quite like I saw it in the video, but uh, that's okay. Apparently you're supposed to tug this. I don't know if this, ah. Anyways, this is supposed to work. You're supposed to tug it towards the back and it's supposed to lock your stitches. Um, I'm having a little trouble. I don't know. 
Let's see here. Okay, and it did say, oh, here we go. Here we go. So, and I am lifting this up, so it should be, all right, this tension is, uh, let me try to get some, all right, here we go. All right, and let me try to just cut this off. Hold on a second. Actually, don't have, I do have this box cutter. We'll use this. I, kids, don't try this at home, but uh, this might work just for this. All right. Oh, here we go. Okay, now it's coming out pretty easily. All right, so this actually came out pretty nicely. So you've got this triple stitch on the front, and then look at the back. You've got this really beautiful network of stitching. That was actually super easy. Okay, so that tip actually seemed to work. Um, so by doing that, it brought the stitches to the back, and then it locked it in place apparently. So I guess that's good. So yeah, I think we're okay. And this seems to be coming out, all the threads seem to be coming out pretty, pretty easily without too much effort. So, all right, so that is our first cover stitch. Um, so it looks like this on the front and it looks like this on the back. So that's actually pretty cool. All right, we've got, all right, Allison, that happens a lot in discount or those stores that try to sell something like it's a good deal. Most of the time it's just quality. All right, Allison says, no, not the, not the tuck. It's my enemy and my friend. <laughs> All right, Champagne Twist says, could you please post a close-up of the stitching? Okay, yes, we certainly can. Could you try some bulky fabric? Let's, yes, let's do some bulky fabric. I think that's a great idea. And here is a close-up of the stitching. All right, is that good enough to see? I don't know. All right, let me know if that's cool. All right, and then here is the back. And I have to say, I'm amazed this thing is like just ready to go out of the box like that. I think that's pretty cool. And it came with enough thread that I should be able to get started with a few things. So yeah, it looks really nice on the back. Um, obviously, um, Typically, this would be trapped within some of the threads, but I was just trying it out, but it works really well, and the stitching actually looks pretty even. <laughs> All right, so let's do Claire's, or is it Sierra's suggestion about doing um, several bulky layers? Okay, um, all right, so let's, all right, we'll just, we're just gonna like fold up this a bunch of times and see what happens. Um, Cause yeah, sometimes you do need to sew a pretty bulky seam. All right, so we will try, um, so this is like, all right, we'll, we'll, let's try doing four layers. All right, we'll try doing like four layers of, uh, all right, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna move this a lot closer though to the end. All right, let's try this and see what happens. This is four, actually let's do, you know what, we'll do eight layers. All right, we will do eight layers of fabric and see if this thing, how, how this thing holds up, I don't know. All right. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna try all these, okay, this is sort of coming out, but hopefully it'll work. All right. I probably should get some pins or something, but we're just sort of rolling with it. All right, so let's try this out. Actually, this is sewing really well through the eight layers of cotton. And this is not thin cotton. This is like bed, this is like organic bed sheet cotton from Target. So we're just gonna try this out. Um, this is actually going through, I'm really not having much trouble at all. Oh, oh. all right. I think we might have run into some, oh, I think this is just stuck under here or something. All right, let me just, oh, here we go, okay. All right, we're cool now. All right, don't worry guys, it's just the thread that was stuck. It's not really a problem. Okay, so let's try. And this foot seems pretty, this foot seems to be holding the fabric pretty well. Okay, so, all right, so now we're at the end. Looks like my shopping wish list has just expanded again. All right, Allison says, it's actually pretty good. I need one or use my mom's hand sewing machine. That sounds like a good good idea, Allison. All right, we're gonna, I should probably got in the trash can, but I did not. All right, so let's do that thing again where we lift up the presser foot. 
pull the thread towards me. And then you're supposed to like cut off the thread here. All right, and then pull. Okay, actually that worked out pretty good. And then cut here. And then this is supposed to not only pull the threads to the back, but it's supposed to lock the threads. Actually, that worked out pretty good. Um, yeah, really, there's no skipped stitches. The tension in the stitching is actually beautiful. Like, it actually sewed up, that actually sewed up really nicely. Now, guys, this is eight layers of fabric. So check out the front. Look how beautiful that is. And it actually, even though I'm like totally new at this, the stitching doesn't look wonky. Like, I've seen some other people sew on cover stitch machines and the stitching does not look like super straight, but this stuff actually came out really straight. And then the back, this is the back. Wow, I'm actually, all right, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm, I'm actually, right off the bat, I'm pretty impressed with this machine. Um, I really didn't have any expectations and I've never used one before, but I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Um, the tensions were perfect. Um, and the stitching, like this looks, this just looks totally professional. Um, I might actually try to, I, I don't know, there's another setting, I don't know what that is, but there's like this little button and you can change what the, what the back stitching looks like, so maybe I'll switch that and see. Oh, and it also tells you, there's like a little, um, oh, okay, I don't know, it. okay, I think, is one for binding? Alright, I gotta figure out what some of this stuff is, because on one side it's got like a little dotted line with like a long sleeve shirt, and on the other side it's got a little solid box with someone in it with a tank top. I don't know what any of that means. Um, let me turn it around and I'll show you what I'm talking about though. Uh, Cause I'm really not 100% sure what all that is. So if anyone knows, let me, let me know. Um, Lizzie, that is a good, um, that is a good question. I'm not sure how to thread the machine. From what I understand, it's not too bad. I did watch a video on it. And the, uh, it takes two, you can either do one, two, or three needles, and it takes at the most three needles. Okay, so if anyone knows what this is, it's like, I think that's the difference between what kind of stitching it is. And you can see it's got like the long sleeve shirt and then the tank top, and I'm not really sure what the difference is between the dotted lines or the salt, like the solid line stuff. I don't really know what that is. Well, let me try to look in the manual and see maybe if that can offer some some sort of help. I'm not really sure. All right. How do you thread the machines? Does it have designs? Um, I don't, I think there's just two kinds of uh, stitching, but I need to figure out what that is because I, I'm going to be honest with you, Lizzie, I really don't know. But we're going to try to find out in the manual to see what that is. Okay. Let me see if I can figure this out because I'm not really sure. All right, I'm looking through here. Yeah, I know this is what you really wanted to do on a Sunday afternoon was watch me read something, I'm, I'm sure. But thank you, thank you for spending time out of your day with me. I, I honestly really appreciate it and I never thought people would want to tune in live just to see stuff like this. But apparently there are people that want to, so I'm glad you're here, I'm here, and I'm gonna try to be here every Sunday. Um, you know, unless something happens to me, which hopefully not, but you never know. All right, so, okay, there's some sections on balance tension. I gotta figure out what that button is. I'm sure maybe it's on the front. Maybe I can figure it out. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so, I'm not real sure. Okay, it is the perfect way to spend time. Lisa, thank you very much, and I enjoy spending time with you guys, and I'm so glad that this comment section's been great for people to chat and share ideas and also advice about sewing. Uh, but I'm actually pretty jazzed about this machine. This actually looks really, like I think it'll actually be really helpful. Now I have not tried, I've got some knits over on the other side of the room, so I think I'm gonna try to grab those and see if that does as well. Obviously it's gonna be a little easier with woven fabrics than it will be on, uh, knits are the tricky ones. So that that's the ultimate test is how does it do with knits. Um, yeah, and I still don't know what the difference is between, okay, triple cover stitch. Okay, I'm honestly not super sure. But yeah, so the diagram on the front, though, does seem to um, 
kind of tell you how to set it up for the one, two, or three needle functions, which is cool. I still have no idea what that is, and I'm trying to figure it out. So, I'm not really sure. All right, it's got a care of the machine, triple cover stitch applications. All right, I'm not seeing that little diagram in here. I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm not claiming to be an expert on this machine, clearly. Um, but you'd think the manual would have something. All right, champagne twist. Between us guys and girls, are we honestly ever done shopping? Allison, no, we are not. And that is the beautiful thing about sewing is that there's always something, that, like they're always coming out with some with something new, a new machine, new whatever. There's always so much stuff to, to look at and do. All right, can you explain the difference between the twin cover stitch serger or the serger? It's not my machine. My machine is the 1000 CP, so I cannot explain the buttons on the front, but I can recommend the cover stitch on, machine on Claps, Crapsy. That might be a good idea for me, uh, Doherty, because I'm not really sure what those buttons are on the front. Okay, the twin cover stitch server. Okay. And uh, Ewa, the difference between the serger and the cover stitch machine is mostly that the serger has a knife and it's used for the edges of seams. The cover stitch machine is used for hemming and it does not have a knife. So the cover stitch machine is mostly used for like the bottoms of t-shirts, uh, tops, sleeves, um, and it has like a double or triple row of stitching on the right side and on the wrong side it's got this little network of, uh, of uh, stitches on the other side and it's help, it helps to kind of enclose your raw seams. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure what those buttons are. I really need to try to figure that out. Because uh, I'm very curious as to what the difference is between that shirt and the tank top. I mean, what what is that? Uh, but I would like to take a minute to, again, thank my friends at Pink Castle Fabrics, Brenda and Jason. Uh, because Brenda and Jason at Pink Castle Fabrics are loaning me this machine to show you guys, to help hopefully make some videos. And I do plan an entire series on... I'm going to do more of an in-depth review once I actually use this thing more. Uh, but so far, it's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. I'm really excited about the possibilities that this machine has because it sews beautifully. It feels really heavy duty. And uh, even right out of the box, like, you don't have to, like, the cool thing is that you I used, literally used this, like, within, like, five minutes of opening it. You know, the thread was all ready to go. It was threaded. Actually, let's see if we can take a look at the uh, the inside of the machine. Um, let's see if we can figure that out. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is the inside of the machine. And it does have a guide about... Okay, so it's got a guide for um, threading the looper. And that's really the only... Um, like the other... These three these three uh, needle threads are thread... You thread it pretty much just like a sewing machine. And this one looper is the only one that has a different way of doing things. So... You know, Iwa, all right, let me, I'll, I, I will explain more about why I ended up going with this one. Um, you know, I do own another Janome sewing machine, the Janome 7700. It is a great machine, good quality. I have not had a single, I've owned the machine for about two years and I've had zero issues with it. Um, actually, I've had very few issues with any of my sewing machines, except for the Vintage Singer. That one, um, that one, that one takes a little bit of finesse to use. But uh, but the Janomis, I think, are a really great value. Um, they're sort of mid-priced as far as the sewing machines go. They're not. They're definitely not the cheapest, but they're not the most expensive either. Um, so I think the Janome, in my opinion, I think the Janome line offers a really great value. And I've used other. I've gotten the chance to use a lot of other types of sewing machines in um, various uh, sewing workshops and. I think um, I, I feel very comfortable on these machines. Um, I find them easy to sew with. On my Janome 7700, I absolutely love the AccuFeed foot that comes on it. That has made my life and my sewing a lot better. Um, this machine feels really just straight out of the box. It feels solid. Um, stitching with it, it's not rickety. It doesn't feel shaky. It feels very, very smooth. And sewing with it, was it, the movements of this machine are very fluid. Um, like you've, you've seen in my previous videos, I do also sew on the Eversone Sparrow 25, which is another amazing value. I will say that, you know, the Janome sew a little bit smoother, but I think your, your decision depends on what your budget is. Obviously, um, 
you know, you, you know, you, you can only buy something within your budget, but, um, I think these machines are a really good value and I have used, um, at one class I was at, I used a $6,000 serger. It was not a Janome. I honestly don't know who in their right mind would pay $6,000 for a serger. $6,000. Um, not me for sure. Um, so in my opinion, I think any sewing machine under like $1,000 is, you're probably going to get a pretty good value. And if you are watching again, thank you so much for joining me. We are unboxing the Janome Cover Pro 1000 CPX. And I'm going to be honest with you, this has been a really good time so far. So uh, if you're here, um, again, hopefully, hopefully you found your way over here from the uh, now defunct live stream that shut down on me. Um, you also missed my husband scaring the crap out of me, um, which is always a good time too. But I'm going to try to wrap this up just because I know that, uh, I know that this might happen again. Um, so I don't want the iPod to get shut down. So, all right, I just want to go over, so this machine so far, I really like it. I never did figure out what this is, but I'm going to, before the next time I do a video, um, Nelly says, welcome back. I just got the, yeah, sorry about that, Nelly. Um, yeah, this, uh, apparently the iPod got super overheated. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about, um, Pink Castle Fabrics. Obviously, um, I want to thank them hugely because if not for Brenda and Jason from Pink Castle Fabrics, we wouldn't be doing this video right now and I wouldn't be able to make videos about this machine in the future. Um, so a big shout out to them and and here's the thing, so Brenda and Jason at Pink Castle Fabrics, um, Pink Castle Fabrics is a brick and mortar shop and they offer um, they offer like fabric and sewing machines, they're an authorized Janome dealer, they offer, they offer online sales. Um, not all quilt shop, local quilt shops do, but they they do, and uh, you know, obviously, I am a fan of Janome machines. I have one myself, so this is um, this is my second one, and uh, I think they're very they're great values for the prices. And I do want to say that um, J Pink Castle Fabrics is having a special offer for Sewing Report viewers, and let me explain it. So, if you but purchase any sewing machine from Pink Castle Fabrics over five hundred dollars. Until August 1st, 2017, this is a, a bit of a limited time offer, but if you purchase a sewing machine over $500, they're going to give you a $50 gift card that you can spend on accessories, on fabric, on tweezers, anything you need to get started with your machine, which is a great deal. And I've checked out their prices online, and you should definitely look at their website. Their prices are very, very competitive, very good prices. Um, the retail price for this machine is $7.99. But they're offering it for $5.99, which I think is great. And uh, I do want to talk a little bit about, um, I know a lot of people are kind of wary about shopping online for sewing machines. I know I've heard a lot of people say, just buy it from a local dealer, just buy it from a local dealer, because what happens if something goes wrong and you need to get it serviced? And I will say this, um, if you want to support a local family-run business, a brick-and-mortar shop, a lot of people are very passionate about doing that. Pink Castle Fabrics is a brick and mortar local business. They just happen to also offer online sales for convenience to the customers, which I think is amazing. Um, they've been in business for several years. Um, they've got a lot, of, a lot of fans, including myself. And Brenda from Pink Castle Fabrics is very passionate about, about the sewing community. She's very involved in the sewing and quilting community, and she's become a really good friend. Um, she started talking to me about a couple of years ago. I was writing an article about um, can you really make a. I was writing an article about whether or not you could make a living sewing or quilting, and she really offered me a lot of time to respond to my questions and to be interviewed for the article. Really, she didn't even know who I was. You know, most other people wouldn't give me the time of the day at that point, but um, but her and Sarah from So Sweetness are have just been so kind to me over my time in the sewing community and quilting community that I just have, you know, I have, I have nothing but love for the, for, for Brenda and for Sarah and uh, Brenda. So let me tell you a little bit about Pink Castle Fabrics. Not only do they offer sewing machines and, um, and notions and fabric, but Brenda also runs two really cool, um, sewing events. One is called Glamp Stitch a lot and the other is called Camp Stitch a lot. And basically, a couple times a year. You'll have to look at the website, but 
One is a little bit more like camping style, like you stay in a cabin and you get instructions from, from very notable uh, sewists and quilters in the community that will teach workshops for the weekend. Glam Stitch A Lot is how it sounds. It's a little fancier version at a hotel, at a nice hotel. You get to spend the weekend, sew, meet other people, and it looks like a lot of fun. I've never been, but I've heard great things about both events. Um, so definitely check that, check that out. And if you are in Michigan, uh, the business is located in Ann Arbor, I would highly encourage you to go visit the shop because um, I've been talking to Brendan and Jason and they're just such nice, such authentic, genuine people. And I will say this, they're 100% dedicated to customer service. So if you are a little bit leery about buying online, about something going wrong, just know that they really stand behind their products as well as Janome standing behind their products. And they wanna make sure that you are a satisfied customer and that they take care of you. Um, I've been talking to them for quite some time. They really do care. I'm not just saying that, they're not just saying that. They they wanna make sure that you are happy and that they, that they they also are not, they, they're big believers that their customer service doesn't end with the sale, that's where it begins. So if you have any questions or if you wanna talk to them or if you bought products from them, they can be reached over the phone and via email. And they're very, they've told me they're very dedicated to making sure their customers' questions and concerns get answered. So I know some folks on here have said, you know what, my local dealership is not that great or they've had problems with businesses in town. Um, I would definitely urge you, encourage you to give Pink Castle Fabrics a chance. Uh, they really want your business and they want to earn your trust. And I've been friends with them for quite some time and they're really good people. So I would not send you over to Brenda and Jason at Pink Castle Fabrics unless I truly believed that they would take good care of you. Um, so they are offering a special special deal for um, Sewing Report viewers. Again, if you purchase any sewing machine over $500, you will get a $50 gift card towards anything on their website that would, you know, like accessories, uh, tweezers, feet, anything that you need to get, that you want to have added onto the machine. They sell sewing machines, embroidery machines, sergers, cover stitch machines, and lots of accessories. Um, so I've linked them in the description box below. Um, oh, and to get this deal, you need to tell them that Sewing Report sent you. Um, there's no coupon code or anything, but basically if you are buying something and you're checking out, add a note just saying, um, heard about you from Sewing Report, Sewing Report sent me, um, and you will, they, they will give you that $50 gift card. This, this deal does um, last until August 1st. So you've got a couple months to check them out. Um, so if you are looking to upgrade your machine, maybe you've got a domestic and you want a slightly nicer one, or you've got, you want to get a serger or you want to get a cover stitch machine or an embroidery machine, I would definitely encourage you to uh, support local businesses. And there are many local quilt shops that are doing business online. So don't feel like you're supporting some faceless corporation. You're not, you're supporting real people. They're based here in the United States. And there are some very, you know, in, in my time sewing, I've met some very good people who genuinely want to help people with their sewing and quilting. Um, and Pink Castle Fabrics is definitely one of those businesses. I right, got a couple comments. What is the correct pronunciation of Janome? I believe it's Janome. Um, although in that, that crazy YouTube video I saw with the Janome, they're like, Janome. But I think that was more of the Japanese pronunciation. But I've pretty much heard, I don't know if, me, I could be totally wrong. I'm not the best at pronunciations, but from what I understand, it's Janome. Um, is it Janome 2300 good? Cause I am getting it. You know, Lizzie, I am not sure, but I do have uh, a Janome sewing machine and I use it and I like it. Um, I think there are, you know, again, there are a lot of great sewing machines out there. You just need to find the one that is right for you. Um, before you buy something, I always look at a lot of reviews. Um, in fact, that's one thing Brenda and I were talking about is that, you know, there's not a ton of reviews on this machine. So that's why we wanted to kind of maybe try to create some content around it. You know, is this a good machine? You know, it seems awesome so far. I'm going to find out and I'm going to be honest with you about what I think. Um, obviously, I don't know what these things are yet. I'm going to figure it out by hopefully by the next video about this machine. Um, but I would like to tell all of you, um, if you, and also um, another thing is that um, in order to continue making content for Sewing Report, 
um, and to be able to do these things, I do need to work work with people, work with businesses. And uh, Pink Castle Fabrics has been very supportive of Sewing Report. So if you love me and you love Sewing Report and you want to help support what I'm doing, um, in turn, it would help me if you help if you check out Pink Castle Fabrics because uh, they really taken a chance on me. I you know I'm not some huge I'm not some huge blogger or vlogger, uh, but they have been so kind to me and so good. And they were definitely willing to work with me to um, to be able to bring you this series of videos. And this is just the first one. Um, and even you saw, even right out of the box, I was able to use this pretty easily. I haven't even read the instruction manual, which is a really bad thing to say. Um, but I didn't have a lot of trouble. I did do some research ahead of time, but I really didn't have a lot of trouble with it once I got out of the box. It was honestly ready to go. All I had to do was pull this thing up, put one of the spools back on, just because it had gotten jostled a little bit around in shipping, but I mean, really, this was not a, a difficult machine to use so far. Um, I just need to figure out what all of this means and what is the difference between the shirt and the tank top. I really want to know. I read a couple more comments. All right, what does a serger or a cover stitch do that a serger does not share? You'll definitely want to check out part one of the live stream. There usually is not two parts, but since the live stream went down, that is why there's two parts. Um, but we did go over a couple times. Um, the serger does mostly seam allowances. The cover stitch machine does hems and decorative stitching, and it does not have a knife. So that's the main difference. All right, we've got Lizzie. What type of thread should you use when you start sewing with the sewing machine? Lizzie, um, I've used all kinds of different brands of thread. Uh, there's obviously high quality thread, low quality thread. One of my favorite brands is Aurifil, uh, just for regular sewing. I have found that's a really good, reliable brand. Um, lots of great colors. So that's what I use a lot. And I've also used Sulky brand, um, Wonderfill. I have some of their um, very fine threads that I actually use to sew this shirt because it's good for delicate fabrics. Um, but typically you, you know, I would definitely look at ratings on threads and talk to other people who sew, but I like Aurifil and I also like, um, I really like the, I actually really like this Wonderfill thread, but um, I usually use cotton or poly threads. Um, both, in my opinion, um, have performed about the same. And right, we've got Nelly. I'm from the UK. Thank you so much. We'll check out the website. My local dealer was great as I can't get out. And hubby bought me my uh, 4400 a few weeks ago. They offered to come to my home. That is very cool. At least you've got a, at least you have a local dealer that really offers customer service. And I think that's one thing I've noticed. I don't know if it's just this day and age, but it's really hard to find a business that offers you good or even adequate customer service. Well, I don't know what's up with that, but that really ticks me off. Um, but talking to the talking to Brenda and Jason from Pink Castle Fabrics, that is like their number one priority is good customer service because you know a lot of these sewing machines might have similar prices, and you know a lot of them offer shipping or you can go to local dealerships. So they know that you have a lot of options of where to buy your sewing machines. But Pink Castle Fabrics is truly dedicated to providing you exemplary customer service. I know these people personally. They're great people. They're, they're very, very focused on providing you a good experience and making sure that you are taken care of as a customer, which in my book is very, very important uh, because I've, I've patronized businesses that I really didn't feel gave a crap about me. They just wanted my money, and then after, um, after they... Uh, got my money, they really didn't care about me. Um, you know, case in point, uh, this house we're in, this is actually a new construction house. Um, after the sale, we had some problems with uh, mail delivery and with some other things. And those salespeople that sold me the house would not, they wouldn't even return my email or phone calls. Um, so there's a lot of businesses that operate like that. Pink Castle Fabrics operates differently. Um, I can 100% I can testify to that. And, um, you know, so again, please check out their website and they are offering that special deal to sewing report viewers. If you buy a sewing machine over $500, you'll get a $50 gift card that you can spend on anything else at the shop to help get you started with your projects. Um, this deal is until August 1st, 2017. So I would definitely encourage you to check them out. Um, you know, you can order it and get it in the comfort of your own home. And if you do experience any issues, you know that the people behind this business will not let you down. So I think that's very important, whether you're shopping locally or whether you're shopping online is 
what kind of customer service am I going to get after this sale is complete? And I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about. Right, we got a couple more comments. Your outfit is lovely. Where did you get that fabric from? Champagne Twist. This is actually um, polyester crepe, and this will be featured in a video soon. We actually just shot it earlier today. Um, this is Simplicity, I think, 1693. It's like a sleeveless top. Um, I'm going to be honest, polyester crepe, a little bit tricky to work with. Not going to lie. Uh, but I got through it. I don't know if I'm going to sew with it again for a while, but this fabric was from Craftsy.com. I don't know if they still have it, but I noticed they had it for quite a long time, so they may still. Um, it's called like Georgette Polyester Crepe. It was $5 a yard from Craftsy, and I got a two-yard cut. So it was enough to make this top and then these little shorts that I'm wearing. Then I added some little pom-pom trim. So Craftsy.com, yeah, have they sometimes have some really amazing fabric deals. You just have to kind of look around. All right, how many stitches per? All right, I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, that's a good question. I don't think I know the answer. All right, I just looked at the website, and I'm looking for a cover stitch machine. Thanks for the review. I will keep an eye out for your full review. And, and that is definitely coming. Um, I obviously need to spend some more time with this machine to kind of learn how it functions. And then, because I really don't want to do review videos without actually using it a lot. Um, I haven't tested out on knits yet, which I will definitely be doing. And maybe, I'm, maybe if I can figure it out, I'll try to offer some tips for hemming with knits. Um, because I have seen, like I got some of that Wonder tape, and I've heard that's good for keeping hems in place while you sew it. It doesn't gum up the needle, so we'll see if that works. All right, prom glass. Oh, yes, the prom glass is here. And, uh... Did I get a plug yet? Did it get a plug yet? See, yes, this is the prom. You know, I have not. Um, James told me not to mention the prom glass anymore. He felt it was a little cheesy, but I'm still gonna keep using it in all the videos. Um, that's not gonna change. So in every um, episode, the prom glass will be here, even though he thought it, he thinks it's not a very good idea. Um, all right, the cost of this model, this one, Pink Castle Fabrics, is offering the CPX uh, 1000 for $5.99. The retail price is $7.99, so that seems like a very fair deal. And uh, the machine, um, from what I can tell, it definitely seems to be uh, worth the money. Um, because when I was looking at these, I was actually thinking about going for that brother serger. Um, but I'm actually really glad that I was able to work with Pink Castle Fabrics to try this one out because... This one does seem a lot more, um, I don't know, this one does seem a lot more substantial than even my brother serger. The brother serger is great, don't get me wrong, but this one actually stitches a lot smoother than my brother serger. Um, so that is one thing, even though I haven't tried the brother cover stitch machine, the brother serger, it's a great value, but it does get a little shaky when you're sewing with it. It's still a great value though, and I would still spend $200 on that all day long. But this one is a little bit, this machine does seem a lot steadier to use. All right, I have this machine. Hello from Huntsville. Oh, yes, M. Gilbert, I did not mention it up until then uh, because James told me I should not mention the, the it in every video because he thought it was cheesy. All right, and we've got a, yes, yes, it is a pretty good price. Um, so yes, in the description box, there is a link to check out Pink Castle Fabrics and all the machines. Uh, but definitely check out their website, and if you like what I'm doing here on Sewing Report, um, I would ask, you know, if you want to do me a favor and help support this mission, um, definitely give Pink, Pink Castle Fabrics your business because they are supporting Sewing Report. So indirectly, Pink Castle Fabrics is helping Sewing Report put these episodes on. So I wanted to thank everyone for watching today. I love the prom glass and love the shirts too. Looking forward to the video, the new to sewing. Nelly, at one point we've all been new to sewing, so welcome to the club. And thank you for joining us in this live edition. Wow, there's a bunch of random stuff in the background. I'm not even, oh, this is the straw from the, I'm trying to figure out what everything is in the shot. I can't even tell. Uh, but I'm going to sign off pretty soon, and I will see you guys next week for a new episode. I'm not really sure what we're going to be talking about. I was thinking about maybe doing a whole episode, kind of getting your opinions on celebrity fabric lines. Um, because I've noticed like every celebrity seems to have one coming out, even celebrities that have like nothing to do with this industry, which is kind of interesting to me. Um, so we will see what happens. Um, Keaton Quilts is here. Hello, Keaton Quilts. Did you review other models and why did you choose this one? You know, um, I was talking to Pink, uh, Brenda at Pink Castle Fabrics and, you know, she recommended this one. 
Um, so I said, you know what, I'll give it a try because uh, they're, they ha Janome has quite a few different other models. They've got the 900 CPX, the 2000 CPX. Um, there's also Singer. I mean, every brand has a cover stitch machine. Um, but honestly, I'm really glad I, I'm really glad we were able to get this one because so far it seems awesome and it actually came with a pretty substantial amount of thread. So I should be able to make a few projects with this even without switching out the thread. Um, and at that point, we're gonna have to learn how to thread the machine. So perhaps um, I can offer, maybe I'll do a tip video or like how to thread the machine once I get that figured out. Um, I really will, I promise you I will figure out what this means on the front with the pictures because I have no idea. And uh, for, for everyone watching, I will, hope you have a happy Sunday and a great weekend and I will see you next time. Baby. Baby.